You are listening to Gorecast, you idiot. What's up, guys? We're back with another episode of the Gorecast, and with me today, I have one of my very, very good friends uh, from the Austin comedy scene, epic roaster, great comedian, Mike Eaton. Give it up. Um, how you doing, Mike? Yay! Yay, we're here, dude. We've been we've only been drunkenly talking about this for for. A year? A year, yeah. yeah. Dude, you want to do my podcast? Yes, bro. <laughs> yes, I would, would love to. And then it's like, and then it, we put a date in our phone, like I think three different, two different times or something, yeah. and just didn't. Dude, sorry. <laughs> at 145, brother, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> brother, I had too many at Creek the other night. Here, make sure oh. that's uh, pointing right in front of you. It's the story of, of my life. Oh, it was, yeah, it's, there you go. Yeah. Oh, it's, just eat it, dude. dude Mike, stuff is so interesting because I I've done at this point now hundreds and hundreds of pods and, and mm-hmm. recorded things, and the difference between good audio and bad audio, yeah, is night and day. Yeah, I don't know enough about what makes what good and what makes not good. Yeah, but I can hear it. Do you think good jokes, good riffs, can make up for bad audio? No, <laughs> not even no? a little bit. Okay, I think that there is a. I think audio might be the most important part because we have seen on all the platforms people take audio and put it over completely other videos oh, to yeah. great viral success. Yeah. I mean, how many fucking Roblox Minecraft <laughs> videos are there with just fucking a comedian's joke being told over top of I've it? never seen that. Oh, man. Really? Maybe my algo's just fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Maybe. your algorithm's cooked. It's I, just food. My algorithm just food wants weird. me to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, comedy's dead. Eat this food about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You've been doing good though. What yeah. are you been, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? You've been traveling. You went to. I want to hear. Okay, here's one of the things I want to hear for yes. sure. So, uh, I have had. We've had panties in the mouth here in the studio, yes. and uh, we've had we have Ridley in the studio. Yes. I have heard two. I guess four if you count all the people. I've heard four sides of the infamous Skankfest pizza debacle. And and I would love to hear. I think that we deserve to hear from you now because we've heard so many people speak on this issue, and you know you've kind of been kept in the dark about it. It's been a lot of. It's you haven't been here to defend yourself. I would like to give you a chance to put forth, you know, your version of things, your story, and you can go ahead. You can explain it from the tops because I don't know that anybody watches, you know, those Anything podcasts else, from yeah. here. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> This is one of those things that if it was on national TV and everyone knew all the tea, this would be fascinating. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just it's no, I mundane know. and it's only interesting. Well, you can explain the trip to me too, from your uh, point of view too, just from leaving and everything. Like you just explain this gang fest trip because you guys packed into an RV and all this shit and yeah. it was a nightmare. It was so there, it's kind of this thing that happens a lot with comics where you have an idea for something and then everybody's like, let's do it. And then one of the reasons that hardly every anything gets done is because no one puts the ball in motion. Right. It's just a drunken conversation at Creek. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's just a, an idea you had in a green room. It's just a premise you put in a notebook, but it'll uh-huh. never become a joke or a sketch or whatever. Um, and there was this idea of uh, making like a content van, and like a, mm-hmm. a group of us would be on the van, and then it kind of morphed into filming a mockumentary with David running to Skankfest, making fun of Darian riding mm-hmm. a bike to Skankfest the previous year. <laughs> Uh, and so it was a new crew, and then I was the only, like, the carryover, and so there was, like, a, a through line and all of that, and it was leaving from the creek again, and so we were going to film some stuff. And um, leading up to it, I had, like, a bunch of shows and, like, a big run of stuff, so I wasn't in town much for any of the planning. And I really don't know much of what got discussed, but I I had an idea in my head, and I guess um, part of me was like, well, I don't want to, like, impede on anything and i'll be fine whatever happens so what what ends up happening is a group of us meet at the creek we get in an rv and then we drive from 6 p.m to 5 a.m just straight through to albuquerque Mm -hmm. park in a walmart parking lot hang out in a walmart parking lot for like a while you guys were just doing what i do when i go on tour when we go on tour you guys were just doing band shit which is pretty cool actually it was cool and then it was also like what the fuck are we doing? Like, yeah, it, why it, are we doing this? Also, like, man, I'm 33. <laughs> if I was 25, this would have all been sick as fuck. Right. If I, and also, I was not drinking leading up to Skankfest, so I was drying out for it, oh, like, the entire okay. month of September leading up to so Skankfest. So you were, were you, a little, were you a little irritable? I wasn't irritable because I was smoking copious amounts of weed the okay. entire time. Like, I took, I smoked half an ounce of dabs, probably. It was nuts. But, um, 
what I was was not drunk. So I, I just wasn't that like, yeah, everything's fun. You weren't the Fuck sweet, it. lovable Mike Eaton that we that we know at Creek. Well, I'm still sweet and lovable, but I'm also like, I'm not, uh, it's not 9 p.m. Mike Eaton either. Mm-hmm. You're talking to 4, 5, 6, 7 a.m. Mike Eaton. And oh, that's a guy, I don't know that guy. No one should. <laughs> <laughs> no one should know that. That guy shouldn't exist. That guy should be asleep, right? That's, Mike Eaton right, should exist right. from 1 p.m. to 1 a.m., and that should be the cutoffs right, because, because everything outside of that becomes a problem. On the In a trip like that, you're getting the boys at all different hours, and you normally aren't. You only get the boys at peak hours normally. Yeah, and yeah. you have mental preparation for the boys. You mm-hmm. have space with the boys. The, hanging out at Creek, the reason that Creek is the fucking perfect place, it's the best place on earth, is that you can be about on this huge back patio. Mm-hmm. And you can be in 10 different circles. And if you're feeling anxious or uncomfortable or not included or whatever in this circle, boom, new circle. Mm-hmm. If someone you haven't seen in a while shows up, boom, new person. Right. Also, if you're just like... This is annoying. I need to walk away. You can walk away. Like I'm overstimulated there's, or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then there's shows happening, so right. you can go. You have a perfect and reasonable excuse to leave any conversation. I'm gonna go watch so and so. I'm up in a minute. Right. You, you have always, even if you're not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go check on a spot. You know, it's it's yeah. carte blanche to be not rude and leave a conversation. Mm-hmm. Which is beautiful and. And there's a bar. <laughs> it's like yeah. it, just, everything couldn't be better. <laughs> so now you remove all of that and you're in a confined space. You are with people. So I know Lemare and Andy and mm-hmm. Germ and Kyle and Justin, you know, pretty well. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and like I don't know Tyler that well, but we've met, you know, but yeah. but even three, four hour increments of hanging out, ten hour increments of hanging out, like all of that has been in recreational mode. None mm-hmm. of that has been in their homestead. I haven't been there <laughs> during their sleep hours. I don't know their nightly routines. You don't We're know not how dating. these people yeah. operate. Yeah, are you clean? Are you dirty? <laughs> Do you leave the door open when you shit? Are you a fucking animal? Like how, and, and, it, and it's just a ticking time bomb with until my real life away from comedy pet peeves start to take over mm. because this is no longer just comedy. Now we're going into real home life. Yeah. So there's all of the stress. You're becoming tensions. temporary roommates yes. in a small box. The smallest box. The smallest box. With not enough bed. I shared a bed with Andy. <laughs> Which is crazy. In, in, in the Two of the biggest guys, but we had the biggest sleeping space, so we shared a bed. But like that's just the most insane just Russia US nuke war of snoring. Yeah. Oh, I bet, <laughs> dude. You all have sleep apnea. It's like 20 guys with sleep apnea in a box on the highway. A That's f- crazy. A fat guy fart box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounded like infrared <laughs> hog. So it's. Guys, this podcast is brought to you by Pocket Dispo. Pocket Dispo is a awesome little camera lens that goes on your DSLR cameras. They make them for Sony's crop sensor and full frame. They make them for Canon, Nikon, um, Fujifilm. Uh, and what's awesome about these lenses are little 3D printed lenses that have an actual uh, disposable camera lens inside of them. So they make all your pictures look like really vintage night, that 90s kind of nostalgic look that everyone's going for nowadays. Super Instagrammable. Um, it makes it really easy if you take, I just took this to um, a music festival recently and it's fun if you just go out on the town and you know, use the use the natural light. It's uh, it's 28 millimeters, so it's nice and wide and it's got a uh, forever focus um, on it so you can basically just in everything is in focus you don't have to worry about it plus if that's the look you're going for you don't even really need it to be in focus um, you just need it to look nifty and vintage and just so hip so um, it's awesome it's a great I, I love using this thing it makes your camera so light you, and I can actually fit this whole DSLR with this pocket dispo on it in my pocket so um, I think I could try to do it right now I have weird shorts on right now but I did it in like really tight uh, like cargo shorts I was wearing one time. So um, definitely check it out, guys. Use promo code GORECAST at checkout to get 10% off and uh, support the pod. It helps uh, helps support the, the pod and the studio and all the stuff we do out of here. So uh, Gore, uh, go to pocketdispo.com and use code GORECAST for 10% off at checkout. Again, that's pocketdispo.com slash GORECAST, or you can use promo code GORECAST at checkout for 10% off. Thank you, guys, and back to the show. It really was um, like a high pressure situation, and I I think everyone on that trip deserves credit that there were no fights or blowouts yeah. or anybody yelling at each other or any real problems. Mm-hmm. 
But we make it to Albuquerque. We have to wait for Walmart to open. We go into Walmart and buy pillows and blankets so we can all go try and sleep in the fucking RV. Yeah. We get back out to the RV. It's miserable hot in there for some I mean, it's just like <laughs> nothing is, is going that good about any of it. And uh, and poor fucking Justin has just driven 13 hours and just wants to be able to fucking rest. Yeah. And, and like we're all just like... Lurr. Finally, we are rested enough to head into Flagstaff from Albuquerque. And we get into Flagstaff and we check into the Airbnb. And as we're driving in, everyone's like, let's figure out food. I'm hungry. We need food. So you take charge immediately. Well, I didn't even volunteer. They were just like, Mike, you're the food guy. Mm. You know food. You pick us food. See, this is where it gets a little juicy because I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure that that the other guys like to remember it like like they were like oh mike is the food guy so he took point they think you took point i i think it was everyone is talking about food <laughs> and everyone keeps going mike what do you think mm. about food i was like oh i'll figure out food so they asked for the advice i don't know if it but it's also kind of like um if you're hanging out with uh, a big group of guys, and the conversation comes up about Miatas and Ridley's there. Right, it He's would be so take fucking point. stupid to not be like, Ridley, tell us Miata stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Like if we're in the panties guy and something about wrestling comes up, right. Don't fucking ask me. Everybody has their uh, yeah. their their database, their specific. And, and I'm fucking food guy. Yeah, you're the food guy. You so, are. So and like. I've never ever once minced words about how I feel about food or what I like appreciate in food. And like, I will tell people to their face, their opinions are trash and that Mm -hmm. they don't know what's good. But like, I also, um, I have a pretty standard palette and I don't like anything. I I like some adventures and crazy stuff, but like what I go for is generally pretty middle of the road, very average food, just done well. Yeah. That everybody would like. Yeah. I like quality ingredients. Right. But I, 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 I love a pepperoni pizza. But just natural casing pepperoni and fresh grated whole fat full moisture mozzarella. Like there's important pieces to the puzzle. Yeah. And so we're you want, talk- you want the normal shit, but just kind of turned up a notch. Yes. Just fancied up. You want it dressed up a little bit. If I'm going to spend money on food and not make mm-hmm. it myself, I want to feel like I got a good deal on it. Yeah. If I go to Domino's and I spend ten dollars on a pizza. I just spent ten dollars to get indigestion, diarrhea, and a headache. Right. It's dog shit ingredients. It's dog shit food, and it's kind of convenient. But that ten bucks, I could have spent on so many other things that would be good and not hurt. Right. If if <laughs> if I spend twenty five bucks and I can get a pizza that's amazing, I would so much rather do that. Yeah. So to me, I'm I'm looking for food, and I'm looking at what's highly rated in Flagstaff that's good for a big group of guys that mm-hmm. are hungry. So this was a Google mishap. It wasn't like a wreck that you had, like something you had been following. This was literally, I went and did my my method I do whenever I yeah. get into a new town, which is I look up the top rated restaurants on Google Maps in there mm-hmm. and just see who has the closest to five stars with over 200 ratings. Yeah. Like that's always my thing. And then I go and look at their Instagrams. Mm. And if restaurants I already follow are following them or they're following them and there's good mutuals there, then it's a good sign. <laughs> dude, it so, goes so deep. That's it's, smart. It's that's important. genius. I, Cause I, I, dude, it sucks. Cause I follow like 6,500 people on Instagram, mm. but it's like 2,000 restaurants. You know? <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, I follow a specifically like four different dairies. Yeah. And the other day I was standing at a show and I got like giddy and excited looking at my phone and Jay Light goes, what happened? I go, I a dairy I like just released a buttermilk. <laughs> a dairy that you like? Like you follow like Dannon? No, no, like real dairy, like Volman's. Oh, okay. Uh, but, <laughs> but, I'm not, dude, I'm not. I thought I was into food, bro. You're like, it goes so deep. I just have a problem. But it's, yeah. it's but so all that in mind, I look up the food places and uh, the first place that I find that for pizza is called, I want to say fat olives, mm-hmm. but something to do with olives and it has. 7,000 reviews or something stupid high and like a 4.8. And I'm like, oh, that's a that's like a dead, that's for sure gonna be awesome. The the hang up is when you get really good high ratings and good stuff like that, but it's a bad town or a small town, it means nothing. Mm. They have no other options. They right. don't know what's good. Right. A McDonald's will have five stars. But when you get into a town like Flagstaff with money and tourism and hipsters. scenery and hipsters mm-hmm. and uh, like all of that, then that means a little bit more because they have a lot of choices and a lot of people are still choosing this place right. consistently. Mm-hmm. So I, I looked into it and then it said Neapolitan style pizzas. And in my head, when I think of a Neapolitan pizza, I think of a pretty big pizza. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think of 16 inches. I think of like a extra large from Giardelli's uh, or not Giard- uh, Giardelli's. Grimaldi's. Or Grimaldi's. Uh, but like 
when I think of like a big pizza like that, like I, I just I think large. And when I see a pizza place that doesn't have sizes, I always assume big fourteen to sixteen inches at least. A uh, standard large at most places is a 14. He's, so he's, the, the, the fat guy tech is crazy on you, dude. I'm sorry. The fat guy tech is insane on you. It's it's It needs to be studied. I'm whale maxing, dude. dude. You, yeah, you're whale maxing, bro. It's <laughs> but, but so, like, all of that information going into it, I'm looking at the menu. I'm looking at the prices. I'm seeing high-quality ingredients. I'm seeing adventurous combinations. There was a white pizza with pear and, like, prosciutto on it. Like, cool stuff. And, and I'm looking at that, and then they have some pretty normal ones, and they're like, I think, twenty five bucks a pizza or something like that. So my head, sixteen inches. They got to be pretty. They, big. It's got to be a big pizza. Right. So then I think four pizzas ought to cover everybody, and then we'll all chip in like ten bucks. Mm -hmm. That that fucking works. Right. So we all chip in. Someone pays. We all Venmo somebody, and then we we go in and we get the pizzas. And me, I, I think I might even say no. I think I walked in. Somebody walked in, but at some point. When the pizzas came out and the, it was four very small boxes, how? What? What was your reaction? They were twelve-inch pizzas. Oh my god! So, so it was it was a what would be a medium at most chains. Yeah, it was it, like a, it was like a DiGiorno. Yeah, it was a personal pan pizza, and, and you brought it back to sixteen and I fucking four giant of those dudes for a bunch of fatties, <laughs> and so everybody is now instant. I'm laughing. Yeah, because I realize what has just happened is that we have fallen prey to fine dining, <laughs> and that we're in Flagstaff, so there's inflation because we're in the middle of nowhere, so it's more expensive to get ingredients there, and that I should have done more research, and I could have looked at the menu, but also, so could anyone fucking else. Yeah. I asked them to look at the menu to pick what they wanted. And they were like, Mike, you pick it, Mike. Well, we, we picked a, like a, a spread, but like I said, hey, these are the two that I really want. You, I don't fuck with these ingredients, but I'm only going to eat slices from these two, so you guys picked the other two pizzas. Here's the fucking menu. They all looked at the menu. They all could have looked at pictures. They could all figured something out and said something, but nobody did. And then when we got the surprise of them being small pizzas, that's pretty fucking funny. Yeah. Oh, and, it is funny. Yeah. And also, but they were not in the mood for funnies. It at that only point. cost you ten dollars. Right. Ten fucking dollars, and what you got for your ten dollars was two slices of pizza. And not that, bad. It's not great, <laughs> but also. Go to Rapolo's on 6th Street at night and tell me how much you're spending for two slices of pizza. Right, probably eleven fifty. They're a little bit bigger, but still. So, also, that's dog shit ingredients and crap served in a drunk bar. And this is high-quality, nice stuff. In like, Flagstaff. In fla so, <laughs> the pizzas get there, and everybody is just pissed and just shitting on Mike. You're fucking dumb. I can't believe you did this. You wasted our fucking money. Everyone's so upset. Yeah. And, and I'm like... Will you guys at least try them first? Like, before yeah. you fucking get all dick right. for it? Like, like, just try the pizzas? And then everybody that tried the pizza said the pizza was very good. And mm. then Ridley ordered a bunch of Domino's for everybody Save else. Save the day. Yeah. Of, yeah. So it was all fine. Right, right. But Nobody's was actually like, was mad about it. It was but, just a good story. It was just a, a good story. And I was curious, and I think I was correct, that there was some... There was some... Uh, uh, there was some differences in the stories because because from the stories from the other people are like Mike was like all about this pizza place or whatever and yeah, I can see you being stoked on it but they, but I was stoked because I yeah. found a thing that has but all I could, of my but, criteria but now I can see them going Mike you're the food guy figure it out but you know also, what I mean keep in mind like I am the food guy so of course I'm super excited to try a new highly rated highly recommended <laughs> pizza place yeah, exactly. I've never even tried it before this is exciting for me right it's fun taking my friends to places I've been that I know that are good yeah but it's Dude, you can fuck a hot girl you've already fucked or fucking a new hot girl. It's like, what? Some things are more exciting. Yeah. The first time you fuck someone's the most exciting, right? Yeah. Did you have to do the walk of shame with the little boxes? Was it you that did the walk of shame? No, back? I think Lemaire may have been the one oh. that walked out with them. But it might have been me. It kind of all blurs, but it just... Yeah. The, it, the seeing the, the, the four small boxes was very funny, and having the four small boxes set out on the table was very funny. <laughs> But then what What none of them in any of the regions, because this was everyone's favorite story to tell at Skankfest. Yeah. Uh, was just to go Mike up to everyone and be like, Mike sucks at food. He didn't know shit. <laughs> we ate tiny fucking terrible pizza that cost $600 in fucking Flagstaff. And I was like, well, none of that is even close to true. <laughs> right? Like, And also what like no one appreciated in any of this while they're giving me shit is that I was also sad. Yeah, yeah. I wanted big pizzas. I wanted big pizzas too, guys. I was so excited for big pizzas with friends at New Place, and then <laughs> my dreams got crushed, and I laughed about it, and then I just got shit on for an hour and a half. I was like, small pizza. Like, yeah. And then the very next morning, they're like, what should we do for breakfast? Mm. Who did they fucking oh, turn wow. to? Oh, wow. Who found fucking breakfast? And where did we go? Rise and shine. And what did they have? Three different things on the menu that Guy Fieri tried. And what did we all have? An amazing fucking breakfast. Right. So 
I missed one. I crushed yeah. one, and I only you're got usually shit out always hit. Story. You're usually your wrecks are always hitting. The, the wreck wasn't bad. No. The expectations were bad. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm glad we cleared that up. Yeah. <laughs> That we wasted, that we burned the first 10 minutes of the podcast on that. I think that sometimes... I needed it. It was for me. This is my show. I wanted to hear your side of the story on that. I understand more and more every day the guys that just want to talk about trains and model cars <laughs> yeah. and, 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 like, whatever their hyperfixation is. Yeah. Because that was really fun for me to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That was I, really exciting. I, I loved it. I, I just wanted to give you fair grounds. I wanted to I give you equal sorry. grounds because you have been silenced in this. <laughs> you have been silenced, and it has been on the internet. And you need to be able to defend yourself. So God. here, I'm giving you your 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 platform. You know what I mean? I'm not bad at food. <laughs> He's not bad at food, Please. you guys. Please watch, watch his food <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Uh, Clearly, you're not bad a, at food, dude. That's we even all the know. best part is that Andy is one of the people giving me shit. It's like we have a pot. Bo- fucking bo- <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're supposed to back me up on this. Uh, it, but it is. It, it's fun to get upset, but I, yeah. no, no one was actually genuinely mean no, about no. any of it. It, it was, was just, more. I also. You you have to be the butt of the joke at that point. And I felt really bad. Yeah. Because I did just tell a bunch of fat guys we were about to have delicious, amazing pizza, and they all kind of got free smells. You know, yeah. it's just like ah. You brought four DiGiorno's back. Yeah. That's funny. That what is, what else did you guys do? What else do you have any other highlights from Skankfest? I know it was a while ago, but I don't I don't have anybody else. To, I haven't talked to anybody else about it on my pod. So um, I I know yeah. you stayed in Vegas longer than everybody else, right? Yeah. Well, and so, so I was like, what are you? What did Mike do in Vegas for fucking? I went a uh, week from Vegas to Reno and did shows up there. What a what a road dog, dude. Because I yeah. know how everyone was feeling when they got back from that thing. They were like, you know, they were on like a week long dopamine repair. You know, like mm-hmm. they needed to just. Everybody was like resting. They were like in power reserve mode after that. And I'm like, damn, Mike is still out there, fucking eating and doing ripping shows. <laughs> <laughs> it was not good for me to do. Uh, I haven't had so. I think for October, I have on the books three days for the whole month where I don't have like multiple things I have to do, mm-hmm. and that's that's oh, great. That's rough. But that's I, great. I would like 10 of those. Mm. But I also, so it would be really great if I also had like uber bunches of money about it. Right. But like, uh, this has been like a crazy month. So I, I I booked like this mini tour. And essentially in the end of August, beginning of September, I was frustrated by my lack of progress on shows and bookings. And I'm not making really any progress in Austin because I'm not a Rogan guy or a Kill Tony guy. Oh, well, it's and hard. Yeah. There's a lot of people here. There's a shit ton of comics and there's mm. just, there's, there's, only so much stage time, and I get a, a good chunk of it, and I yeah. get to do shows, but it's also, I'm not moving up. I'm just mm-hmm. kind of stacked. So I was like, I got to do something. So I reached out, and I booked some of these headlining shows. You got to get in the fucking van, brother. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to talk to Ridley about, too. We got to get in the van, brother. You that, know what I mean? We got to go, go see the people. So that that is like the move, but I, I've, I've done the van mm-hmm, a bunch. The road I, dog. I've, I've, I'm six years in, and I spent the first four saying yes to any and everything, any and everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, even this year, I've had seven and eight day runs with, you know, multiple five hour days of driving. You're not making any money and then the burnout ensues. Yeah, and so I, you know, finding headlining gigs, you know, I I did my first club headlining, like actual listed as the headliner on the dock and all that, had a real club at Wise Guys in January of this year. Nice. And then I didn't headline again until June. And I did Empire in Maine. And I did an hour there, and it was like, man, I've I've got an hour. Like I I have an hour of comedy yeah. that I can do. And then I didn't have anything else lined up for the rest of the year, and it's like, what what the fuck am I doing? You know, like what? Why don't I? Why do I keep seeing people that don't have an hour have shows places? And like, mm. I don't know if I can sell tickets or not, but I'll fucking try. And so I booked um, some. So I booked a headlining show in Fort Worth. With uh, at Big Laugh Comedy Club going uh, right before Roast Battle, so I go and you know headline and then do Roast Battle up mm-hmm. there, and I sold like I think I ended up having like fifty ticket sales for that show, and had like 65, 70 people in the room. So good, not great, but right. good, and it, you know it's fine. It you'd hope it'd be more, 
And then uh, yeah, I come back, and then I had uh, immediately after that was Skankfest. Yeah. So Skankfest goes good, and then I had three headlining dates in Reno that I sold a collective six tickets to. <laughs> for all three. All three. Uh, well, I, they had to be more people in there, though, for each one, right? Um, <clears throat> like just tr tricklers, people that came just came in? So one of the problems is that I reached out to a local producer there, and no fault of his own, because um, they just do normal shows. And then I was like, hey, can I take over your show? But the show was still labeled as a ladies' night with me headlining. <laughs> what? So it, it, it was just kind of like a, this like weird dichotomy of like the host, the guest spot, and the headliner are all men. There's one woman on the show, but <laughs> the, all of the promo material says ladies' night. It's a Wednesday at 8 p.m. Um, it's like the last good week of weather in Reno, and uh, women get in for free on ladies' night. So I had like five women there and then i had two dudes that bought tickets <laughs> wow how the ladies like you they loved me they loved you yeah, yeah. i uh They're like this lesbian's awesome yeah I, <laughs> well women uh think that i'm funny because um they can see how all of the misogyny i do on stage is a joke mm -hmm. um, you're ironic about it or whatever, yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of the same way that uh black people like my harriet tubman joke because they understand, like they've experienced actual racism in their life. Mm -hmm. So hearing the funny version of it that's not hurting, like mm -hmm. the, it, that's the, the the only people that ever yell at me for it are white women. It's the only people that ever yell at me for that joke, and it's because they don't have any other real problems. <laughs> and so it like it, that same thing with uh, like women, like when they hear you know uh, a ironic version of misogyny. They've actually experienced that and what the joke is yeah. based on. So it's really more I'm showing an understanding and appreciation of them and their life experience right. than punching down. And so, like, women like And also jokes. just laughing at how ridiculous it is to treat people that way or whatever. Yes. Yeah. And, and, like, I am... I'm the butt of the joke always, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, if I'm saying something mean about a girl, it's showing you how stupid I am to have thought that. <laughs> um, so, like... The, the shows went fine, like the material's fine. I'm, that's the part that's so frustrating about this is like, I'm not great at comedy, but I am good at comedy now. You're great at comedy. Not yet, I'm, I, I will be, mm -hmm. eventually I will be, but like, um, you know, like, uh, Louis C.K. is great at comedy, mm, Mark okay. Norman is great at comedy, Sam Merrill's great at comedy, sure. you know, uh, you know, Kurt Metzger's great at comedy. Like there, There's like, can do it, there's can't do it, can do it, good at it, great at it. Yeah, and right? like, great is just like, like you can't ever be perfect. Yeah. But and you and there's goat debates and stuff, but right. but it's like I am NBA G League quality right now. I'm Bronny. You WNBA. If I had a dad that was in the NBA, I would be in the NBA, but I I'm not Bronny because I don't have a dad. I don't have yeah. I don't have my dad doesn't do comedy. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> dick. But uh, uh so like I, I'm good at comedy now and I am good enough to do a good show just about anywhere to, to any group of people in any demographic, but I am dog shit at figuring out how to tell anybody about that and yeah. so i have I, i'm spending money on ads nice. and, and i'm making wasting money on ads. i'm wasting money on ads <laughs> you don't because know how to do they're it right. clicking and they're looking at the website and they're like nah ew like i'm paying <laughs> fucking a dollar fifty a click and i'm just throwing 250 bucks at fucking mark zuckerberg like please let me be a comedian yeah. and everyone in all these cities is like Fuck you. <laughs> uh, and the people that come have a great time. And they're yeah. like, dude, tell us when you're coming back. We'd love to bring people. Right. And then I, I That's the they story, follow dude. me on Instagram. And I'm yeah. just like, I, well, I don't have an email list yet because there's not really a point to have 47 emails. <laughs> no. Yeah. So and like, I'm going to spend $10 a month to make sure I can maintain a domain for me able to send Mike at Eaton Comedy mm -hmm. to the six people in Oklahoma City that I also could just text. Yeah. And like, what? what the outside chance that like I, I should probably start doing it and stop cutting myself. But so anyways, the the Reno shows didn't sell well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what'd you do in Reno uh, like after before the shows? Were you we you bummed <laughs> when they didn't when they they didn't draw? Did you drown your sorrows a little bit? I didn't like. I ate some food. You know, like uh, <laughs> we we ate. Yeah, like like food was good. Um, I yeah. You know, so Vegas, I got to eat. Really good, mm -hmm. uh, and I was kind of in like a, a food hangover from there. <sighs> Those are and, the worst, and just kind of like an overall Vegas skank. Like going into so I, I roast battle and headline on a Saturday in Fort Worth. Uh, Sunday, I want to say I did roast battle at the mothership, and then Monday we left for 
Skankfest nice. on the RV. So it was like Chalk stress, stress. Pool. Yeah, and like all of the week leading up to that, I had shit. So then, uh, we get you know we got to, to Vegas. The first like really cool highlight um, was the first place that we ate. <laughs> <laughs> uh it was uh yakitori Ooh. and izayaki uh, i don't know all Dude, the doing this cool. podcast with you hungry was an absolutely horrible idea worst mistake anyone we should, ever did you make. eat already no, i not i'm we're I, gonna I, eat right out we gotta yeah. go eat right after this or absolutely. something but let me find the name of this place because i will <laughs> fuck it up again um do you want to how, how long have we been going mark 31 minutes you want to do plugs real quick you have anything to plug any shows? I have your website pulled up. Uh, kind of, oh, I wish. Um, <laughs> uh, Hachi. That was the name of it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Hachi. Hi, but, um, plugs. Uh, I have a podcast called I Could Eat where I... It's this. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, no, it is it's awesome, just, It's just me with another fat guy, and Andy Malfarina. He's awesome. Uh, but we, I'm showing him around the food seat of Austin. Uh, that's your newest one, right? That's my newest one. Then I have Highly Social, which I've had some really fun guests. Uh, Casey Rocket was just on not too long ago. Mm -hmm. We recorded an episode in the van on the way to Skank Fest, so that'll be coming out soon. Um, and then upcoming dates, uh, November 16th at Big Laugh Comedy Club. We're doing Roast Battle DFW again at 10 p.m. And then at 8 p.m. there will be a showcase. That's going to be super de duper -de fun. Nice. Um, Working hard, man. You always work so hard. It's so admirable. A lot of these, all these comics work so hard. <clears throat> a lot of you guys, it makes me uh, want to work harder on my shit. Dude, it's, uh, there's, I, um, some of it feels like hard work, and especially when I get burnt out, it feels like work. But mm -hmm. then, uh, then coming back to it, it's like, the, realistically, I have like the coolest fucking job oh, on the yeah. planet. I have to remind myself that all the time. Guys, I'm going to be. Um, playing shows with the boys, with the Bystander Boys, and our friends in Chernobyl, The Secret, badass uh, Texas band. Check them out. Um, you can get tickets at bystander.band um, slash tour. We are going to be in Austin on uh, November 13th at Come and Take It Live. We're going to be in Fort Worth on November 14th at Haltom Theater. Uh, San Antonio, uh, November 15th at Happy Place. And Houston, Texas, uh, the 16th of November at the end. And then we're also playing the Thanksgiving uh, Death Metal Fest in Corpus Christi at the House of Motherfucking Rock, baby. Let's go. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, these are probably the last shows we're going to play all year. So come out. Come hang out with us if you're in Texas, you guys. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, so... Uh, where do we go from here? <clears throat> See, my pod's just chill, dude. We just, we just, we just, we're just chilling. It is here. so chill. Um, what you, you were just getting ready to say? We were talking about the grind. Um, you guys, I, but you, I have to do this before okay. I forget okay, yeah, because plug, I'm plug, mentally plug, plug. retarded. No, no, not even a plug. You pulled up my link tree, and yeah. then I went to log into my link tree so that I could uh, delete because I still have the Lafayette show at the top. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm, that that. Oh, and there's my OnlyFans. Yeah, that's. Oh yeah, you have uh, an OnlyFans. I had to have one for six months after I filmed the special with them mm -hmm. um, for a contract. I haven't posted on there in a while, but if there's horny dudes out there, fuck. Just... What do you post on there? Your butt cheeks? No. No? I have just food. Just food? It's, it's literally, it's just me posting on there, but uh, guys can be anonymous and send horny messages. There's a couple dudes that pay me for pictures of me with no shirt on. Why don't you ever just send a little picture of your wiener for the boys? Um, I, <laughs> I've been offered money to do so. Yeah. Uh, and I've done it a couple times in DMs, mm -hmm. but what I You've know- You've gotten paid to be uh, to send a dick pic? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Dude, that's cool as fuck, bro. Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding it, me? It's a, it's a pretty Come good on, feeling. Dude. Dude, that, the first time like I paid a bar tab, and I was like, dude, that was like 40 bucks, and that dude sent me 50 bucks to just see me with no shirt on. That's sick. Like, that felt really good, and then the first time that a guy sent me like $200 for my ween, that's it was like- 200 bucks for a dick pic? You're yeah. fucking kidding me. Dude, it's just like- one of these, dude. I'm about to in the mirror, naked. Wow. Not even hard. Not even hard. Soft. You got to pay a premium if you want that shit. With, with if you want that shit bricked up, dude. dude it, yeah. It, so yeah, two hundred bucks. That, that was like, oh man, this is cool. If <laughs> if I could find ten more guys like him that wanted this every day, mm -hmm. I would do that. Do you think that? Do you think that <laughs> after? <do> you think, <laughs> I don't understand why hot women have jobs. It's yeah. crazy. Well, do you under do you do you do you think that it has the same mental effects on guys that it does on women or no? It it couldn't possibly. Like, do you think after what, like it makes me bad at comedy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
just kidding. That was a joke. Uh, uh, but, do, but yes. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you think that, like, you know, the long-lasting effects of, like, doing porn, you always hear, like, porn stars hot. Like, it affects my relationships, and it's just, it's hard for me, and, like, mentally, like, I feel like a whore or whatever. You know what I mean? But it's like, I wonder if dudes, I wonder if dudes would never reach that. Like, sick, I got another, another hundred, you know, hundred bucks for my dick pic. I think that it, it kind of depends... So I, I think that the, the the dynamic that um, like just from an economic standpoint, women are the supply side and and men are the demand side, in that women have the supply of vagina and the demand comes from the penis, mm -hmm. and so that's where most of the power dynamic is. Is that you know at, was it seventy percent of us are straight, so it's like uh, most relationships are hetero between a man and a woman, and it's a dude seeking a woman to try and smash, and so the women hold the power. Mm -hmm. And then the reason it's the oldest profession is because a man doesn't want her to have that power, he just, he's using his power, which is money, so it's, give me your thing. And then women are like, well now I have, I've usurped the man's power of money in exchange for my power of whole. Mm -hmm. And so then they're just the greatest good swap started, <clears throat> and everyone was like, oh, genius. And it's like a perfect uh, barometer of like, a woman's self worth is how much she would charge a guy to fuck her, because it's like everyone has a number, but it, it, right. but like how much do you actually value yourself? Mm -hmm. and, and and I'm not trying to say that like women are only worth sex. I'm just saying for this specific instance in sex work, mm -hmm. um, that if you're saying that that's like your highest value, then like that you you're determining the market, mm -hmm. and then the market is telling you whether you're right or wrong. <laughs> if you say it's a thousand dollars to fuck me and no one's fucking you, then <laughs> you like, better knock that price Your down. pussy ain't worth a thousand bucks, sweetheart. <laughs> Sorry. You know, but if you're like, <laughs> Could you imagine? I'll suck you for a hundred, and then you've got a line down the block, maybe up the price. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a supply and demand. Yeah, dude. so it's just business, baby. It, it's just business. But so, like, it, to that end, if you're a guy, um, what I found, I haven't had any women reach out whatsoever. Right, I was just, just gonna bring that up. Men. Right. So I, my conflict comes from I have been very clear with all these guys. Hey, I'm straight. No, like no, I, you I don't want you, I don't want to lead you on. I'm not going <laughs> to talk sexually with you. I'm not going to talk dirty with you. This is purely economics for me because I don't want to give you any false hope. That just turns to them on. you out of money. <laughs> it just turns them on even more. I think it fucking does because I'm. Ooh, thinking... I'm just a little worm. Ooh, you just use me for money. <laughs> no, I'm respecting them as a human being. I'm like, hey, bro, I'm not going to take advantage of the fact that you're gay for fatties to <laughs> take your bank. Like, I want you to know that like I'm doing this because I'm broke. Yeah. This isn't sexual for me. And this it's is kind sad. of a bit. Yeah, it's yeah. Kind of a bit. It's also mostly just like, yo, I don't have a job. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I do comedy. I need to, to waste two hundred and fifty bucks on advertising a show in Reno, so I'll show you my dick for two hundred of it. Yeah. You know? So I'll eat a I'll eat a chicken biscuit with no clothes on for you, dude. That's not happening. No, you're I'm not gonna not... mukbang. So here's the thing: the pictures that I have. Uh, Sent to to uh, to the OnlyFans dudes are all things that I am totally okay if they ever got leaked. <coughs> like, you wouldn't be okay with that. No, I don't want a video of me naked eating fucking chicken. <laughs> Do you know how devastating that would be? Do you know how awful that, that, that would be? <laughs> Anyone that, that respects me in any aspect whatsoever, that's out the fucking window. Yo, you guys, see, it's, you're at it Creek wasn't and done everybody for comedy. That at, wasn't a comedy bit. You walk, was, you walk into Creek and everyone's head turns over at you. And they're like, "Do you see that video?" Of Mike naked eating chicken, dude. Yeah, exactly. Because if I'm eating chicken in a sexual way for a dude for money, mm -hmm. and then that video gets out, like, whoa, yeah, right. That's just, um, I don't know, dude. I think they would respect the hustle. You don't think? I, I guess in my head, I was picturing me eating the chicken the way that Ben Stiller eats at the end of Dodgeball. When he says no, milkshake, he and he's just fat and crying, yeah. just shoving food at himself. I pictured that was the video. That I, if that's, I assume that's what makes the most money because yeah. it's sad and embarrassing. Maybe I don't know. I feel like if you were just like, "Hey, boys," you know, and you just like lean back in an <laughs> okay. armchair, All right. you know, I'm like lean back leaked. in an armchair, and then maybe you have like, maybe you have like one in this for this theme as the chicken biscuit, you know, like for breakfast. You have like one laying on your in your lap to just nice. kind of block that out. And if you want the uncensored one, you can pay Better a premium. Be a big biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> Exactly. A two hundred dollar biscuit. Two hundred dollar biscuit. Yeah, exactly. It's not penis. It's just a lot of. It's just a lot of, a lot of thigh and meat. And I don't want to have just a little biscuit covered my little dot of a dick, <laughs> and then you can little... see everything around it. Like, well, where does penis even go? <laughs> Dude, you need a sex. You need to do a sexy food calendar. You need to do a sexy food calendar. See, the problem is, like, now if I do a sexy calendar, it's just a Stavros ripoff. He crushed the sexy calendar so fucking but hard. But it wasn't a sexy food calendar. Some of it was. 
I took it that oh, way. Was it? <laughs> How did you read it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you read it? I interpreted it as all about food. Yeah. <laughs> it was like glory is what food can do for you. you yeah. know? Well, that's uh, the thing, too. It's like maybe it's like a thing to do when you're bigger. Like not physically, but like when you're, God. yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're, when you're, hopefully we're only gonna get smaller. Okay, hopefully, dude. What if? Okay, what if you? I just wanna die. What if? <laughs> what if you? What if you? Uh, <laughs> hang on, I want to ask you this later. Um, what if? Uh, what if you did lose? Like, what if you got fucking jacked? Would your? <laughs> what do you mean? What but, I am? No, no. <laughs> this like, is my thoughts every night before I go to sleep. <laughs> Dude, what if you got fucking jacked? <laughs> yeah, we'll work on it tomorrow. <laughs> so, 7 a.m. alarm, we're hitting the gym. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, would you, would your, would your, would you still, like, would your material, would you still do the same material? Imagine doing fat guy material, uh, the same exact material, but you're like, in, you're chiseled. You're, in, you're, 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 you're 205 chiseled. I I mean there is something funny about that once it's not changing your, your your act at all. Yeah, I think um there is like a I've noticed this um with my buddy Eli Halpern. Mm -hmm. So he's jacked. And for as long as I've known him he's been like a big 63 jacked. Shout out dude. Eli. We love Eli. Uh Eli fucking rules and we did a bunch of mics and shows in LA together and it his uh reception from the crowd has always been so volatile and it feels and one of the things that we've talked about often is that i will go on stage and be like yo you ever see how hitler be raping and people laugh or whatever or whatever it's, <laughs> i'm not gonna burn you can my say material. something dumb <laughs> yeah and I, people will laugh dumb and offensive i can be <laughs> upsetting to people and i get away with it i'm likable i'm charming enough and i'm funny enough that that it works but <laughs> eli goes up and pit vipers and he's like the jews control the weather and they're like we this guy's too hot to be doing this that's exactly <laughs> what it is like there's a thing where he's too hot he's too jacked and he's there's an intimidation factor and he wears, you know, like fucking tank top so you can see his jacked arms. <laughs> like he doesn't do himself any favors in that regard to but it's also like that's who Eli is. Right. In like an era where authenticity is supposed to be. And he's king. probably good at working his way back from that. And, he does, but and it, getting him. But it is like a, a, a place of frustration for him because it, it will be like it's it's sometimes in the right audience, he murders and right. they love it and he's fucking hilarious. Like Filthy Show last week. Right. Uh, he went up and followed me and crushed and had like a really great set, had a heckler and crushed them. Like had a really, really great set. And so it's like how come you can go and do that, and then he does an eight o'clock show the next night and has seven minutes of crickets, mm -hmm. you know, and they hate him. You know, it's so the too cool paradox. It, there, there's just something there that's uh, it, it, on the nights when it works, it works perfectly. But when it doesn't work, he hasn't done him any self, any favors to make it easier to dig out of that hole. Yeah, that's why I don't talk about the band on stage. Yeah, because because uh, I feel like all like a lot of my friends want me to do it. They're like, dude, you got to talk about like because they think it's cool and like mm -hmm. interesting and like it's a thing about me. And I'm like, I need to find a way of, to like make fun of it. Yes. You know, and in a weird way, I don't know why, but I've always been like kind of embarrassed that I, it's a weird thing. And I have no other musicians that feel this way, too. Like I it's like because it's, it's like, hey, I'm in a band. You know what I mean? Like that whole thing. And I and I don't know what it and especially the screamy, the screaming band. You know what I mean? Like that's a whole nother. Oh, what are you? What do you? What do you play that screamo? What are you, one of them screamo bands? You yeah, know what I mean? And it's like, cool. God damn it. It's You know what I mean? I think that there's, um, there are circles where I feel embarrassed to be a comedian. Mm -hmm. um, I would much rather be like, I'm in a band. I'm a fucking rock star. Yeah, I, it would be so much cooler to be like, I have an objective talent. Yeah. I can use a, an instrument. You could be a bass player. Or I can player. use my voice. I, nope. Hard, hard hands, brother. Hard hands. I can't even slap at a bass. It's you bad. Can't even it's, slap at a bass. My old roommate taught me uh, natural harmonics, I think they're called, where you just push stuff on the yeah. frets. And I could do those maybe one out of 10 times. Yeah. It's it pretty bad. I mean, those are hard. I'm tone deaf, mm -hmm. so I can't really figure out singing. Like, you mm -hmm. can do notes if there are like several Oh, I thought octaves. you meant your comedy. No, ah. I'm just kidding. If there's several octaves apart, I can be like, that one's higher. But otherwise, it's kind of like those were two notes, and I yeah. liked them. You know? <laughs> 
So like, I, <laughs> like musically, I'm tarted. Like I'm not. I, I could play the fuck out of Guitar Hero up to nice. medium. Up to medium. Because my pinky couldn't do any buttons. No dexterity. None whatsoever. And if I had them slide, no, oh, we're out, we're out, we're out, dude. But if you were able to turn up the speed on medium and just those first three buttons, mm -hmm. Daddy could have played through the fire and flames on expert. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, <laughs> I I think that they're like. Uh, I don't know, the band thing, like anybody that has a non stand up interest, passion, or, or hobby, something that is is important for them. Mm -hmm. So whether it be as something as serious as a band and like a, a actual th like a, yeah. another career to something as uh, deeply unserious as I used to be a dancer, that's like a, a former hobby. Yeah, just about at every level of commitment to that other thing, when it's brought up in a comedic context, it feels. Uh, dorky. It feels braggy and weird. There, I don't know. Like, how am I supposed to be like, I'm in a band, so like here, and then they're like, oh, like you know the, what I mean? I don't want to give specific examples because it will make me look like a very bad person. But like, <laughs> if you just think back of the last year of stand up comedy that you've seen, and you think of all the people that did something that was not traditional stand up mm. during their stand up act um, that related to something that wasn't stand up, if you can tell me one that went well, I probably give you a hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It, it they 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 are uh, crowd pleasy and and they can be uh, looking for cheap woos. It's clapter. Yeah, looking it's, for cheap. <laughs> <woos>. Yeah, <laughs> it, that's even like if you. I was doing this thing when I got engaged because I have like a like a joke about being with my girl for a long time, and uh, and I was like I just got engaged recently and I would get some like cheap claps sometimes. <clears throat> then like <clears throat> I did it like once or twice and it felt gross. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I did it like a third time and everyone was like <coughs> give, they were like, so the fuck what? You know, like that was their energy. Mm -hmm. you know? And it was like, yeah, I gotta not do that ever again. You yeah. know what I mean? I think that like it's like when people on uh, their first time on stage say, Well, this is my first time. Yeah. It's like well, we don't care. Yeah. Do the fucking jokes. Mm -hmm. The if you have a joke that's about being in a band and about the screaming aspect, I mean, the being embarrassed to be in a band that could be kinda, aspect is funny. I can figure that out, yeah. That's a rare thing that no one really talks about. Mm. And the uh, the aspect of, like, being in a screaming band and doing those sounds. Yeah. And then also being, like, a normal talking person. <laughs> it, it, like, it, yeah, because there's, like, metal comics and stuff I've seen that, like, they're very, like, la there's, like, a big, giant, bearded dude that's, like, rah, 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 and they, like, they, like, impersonate it and I'm like I'm never doing that yeah. I want it to be separate I want to do I want to do it more chill yeah you know what I mean I like and I think that there I want to just be me that's why I did I do it to be myself to be genuine I don't want to be a caricature yes you know what I mean I agree I think so. I, I think that's the, the right way to approach it yeah. I have a bunch of aspects of my life that I don't talk about on stage that people constantly tell me are super fascinating that it's just like can you give us one um growing up uh not wealthy but rich so um <laughs> what well, so there's a difference, uh, like because if you say you grow up rich, people will have their own uh, preconceived notions of what rich is, and I like to temper that notion because some people think rich is millions and millions of billions right. of dollars and mega yachts and crazy Trump. stuff, and some people think rich is a two hundred square foot or two hundred thousand dollar house, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's perspective. So um, when I was two, my parents got divorced. Uh, by the time I was eight, my dad was getting remarried and moving into like a nicer part of Dallas. When I was 12 he moved to south lake which is one of the wealthier zip codes in the country and moved into a house modeled after gone with the wind mm -hmm. uh th so the house had a name which is a thing and then we moved from that to like a twelve thousand square foot 10 bathroom house with a movie theater and a, a pool and a pond and an outdoor cooking area and like it backed up to a green belt what did he do he was a tax attorney oh okay so um yeah so i had like this very cool rags riches story where like growing up yeah, I went to a private school because I, he didn't want me to go to the inner city Dallas schools in the apartment that he lived in, uh, what district that was. And then I was in, like, the best private school, and then I played high school football for one of the most prestigious programs in the country. Damn. And, uh, like, you know, the, all of that stuff, and then going from, you know, broke to, like, rich. And then when I was 18, like, around 2008, around the marketing crash, my dad, you know, lost a lot of his money. And then I kind of went out on my own and then went into the Cutco world and then, like, I fucking did Cutco for four years. <laughs> the Cutco world. And, uh, <laughs> like I think you said that like it's like an industry. It is. Like the real estate world. Dude, they do, uh, <laughs> I think they still do, like, 
three hundred million dollars in sales a year. Oh man, that's crazy. It's they are uh, a sleeping giant because really? it's one of those things that you can bring up to quite a few people and they have an experience. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is tempered by the early and mid two thousands where they were very predatory. Mm -hmm. And they changed that. Uh, well, so the thing is, all of the people that got hired during the predatory phase and then found like some success in direct sales or in management or just some aspect of vector marketing mm -hmm. realized they needed to rebrand and stop those practices because it was just hurting. And that like the, the best way to make money was to be inclusive and helpful, not charge them for their kits, mm -hmm. you know, loan them a kit and show that you care about them and believe in them and train them how to sell it and all that stuff. And like I saw, it took me a while to realize that a lot of the problems with Cutco and Vector is that the same problem with like roofing and construction <clears throat> is that you get the rest of the working world's rejects and all of the felons and problematic members selling of society at, yeah in because, your grandma's house <laughs> because you're you're selling to your network they're not giving you customers you're not going door to door you right. are doing direct sales marketing from your own personal network so the people that are successful about it a lot of the times are people that have found a way to chameleon their way into a lot of different networks mm -hmm. and those can be uh very machiavellian people that don't mind hurting you to get somewhere mm. um so that was why i ultimately left but like so that like there's a lot of stuff that could be very interesting. I sold a software company to a Goldman Sachs exec when I was in my early 20s. That was what? a company that I created with a guy I went to high school with that was like a CRM for a very niche sales industry. And then I got this investment from him buying half of the company. And then I went on Upwork and I hired a guy. And then we're, you know, three quarters of the way to a minimum viable product. And then he ghosts me on Skype, shows up two months later in uh, a different country and tells me a story about how his uh, building that he was living in got hit by a missile. And that his entire life was destroyed and his computer was destroyed. He had nothing and he had to, he was a refugee in another country now and had nothing. And I was like, that's if that's true, that fucking sucks so bad. <laughs> so fucking bad that's in crazy. so many ways. And if it's not true, fuck you so much. <laughs> Whatever. I did this through Upwork so that I had a third party so that I have insurance for this kind of things. And I yeah. reach out to Upwork and they're like, dude, he got hit by a missile. <laughs> We don't have we don't have a policy. There's for not that. like a missile policy. <laughs> so then like the project gets killed in the water. But there was like this like this real year long period where I thought I was about to be like the next thirty under thirty Forbes fucking software billionaire guy. <laughs> like I like that was like my. You started dressing different, dude. You were, I, were you wearing were you wearing <laughs> were you wearing suit jackets and shit? In going high to, school, going to networking. Events. I wanted to be a senator, and I went into <laughs> I went to college. I played a year of college football, and I got this like academic scholarship to go to a college because my dad was friend with the senator from Virginia and his son was my age, so we were gonna go to the same college. Mm -hmm. And then I went out there and that failed and then I came back and I joined a 12-step program and started speaking in sobriety groups for like two and a half years. And I was like, I fucking hate this. And then I got into Vector and then like, so I've had like all these, and then I got into the software thing and then I got into motivational speaking and then finally I ended up in comedy. But it's like, I have all these different things but when I bring them up on stage or even on podcasts, a lot of times yeah. it sounds like yeah, you I'm sound like a dick right now. Yeah, dude, dude I'm just jerking <laughs> myself off. You sound horrible on this pod right now. No, and, I'm just kidding. And like it could be in, like if I'm someone that you're a fan of comedically or like we're friends, so there's like a vested interest there and there's rapport here, I can talk about some of these things. Right. I mean, it's, it's very interesting. You but know what I mean? But it's also like none of that's really that funny. It's inter no, it's not. That yeah, it's <laughs> the same it's the same thing. You know what I mean? As like, you know what it, what I thought of it's like you're you're you were one you were one uh missed like we were you dodged a bullet so many times on ending up at a Diddy party, like you could, you know, like you dude. could, you could have been, you could have been at a Diddy party, dude. Imagine, imagine, what would you do at the Diddy I'd party? Still go. Yeah, you'd still go Today. right now. I don't know what happened at those Diddy parties, but I know I'm not getting raped. Well, and I'm not raping, so <laughs> I'll go and and. Have the food is gonna be amazing, brother. The food and the music. <laughs> What's the food at the Diddy party, dude? Right, that's what I'm saying. What's the food at the Diddy party? This we found the bit. This is the bit. What's the food at the Man. Diddy party? I've had some like really great meals recently. Um, <laughs> the team behind Terry Blacks in Austin mm -hmm. um, opened a Terry Blacks in Waco, and then they I guess just got that whole like block basically on lockdown, and so they just opened their first non barbecue concept. And it's a upscale seafood place called Opal's Oysters. Oh. It's named after like the matriarch of their family. Mm. Uh, and I went to their soft opening and tried the menu. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> literally, it was just like, yes, we'll have one of this. Yeah. You know? Just a small trial uh, of the menu, please. I, I mean, I can't say uh, enough good things about it, but like the the starting dishes there, I feel like it it that would be 
totally welcomed at a Diddy party. Everyone there do you think would, it be, would like, be like, this like, rips. Do you, do you think and I mean this as a compliment. I hope this isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I just realized like, I'm saying that. You're going to hate that. <laughs> yeah, like, You're oh, going to hate that fuck. so much. Worst press ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying that if you were, it would be great on like Epstein's Island. But, like, <laughs> but no, I thought what I did. Because all of the billionaires have already had the best things, so this is something that they, even they would enjoy. Like, clearly, they're so sexually frustrated they have to do that island stuff, so... <laughs> I just imagine you show up, and this it's like... This is not getting better. And it's super lavish. <laughs> it's super lavish. You walk in, and you're like, you know, you see all... The, he's like, these are the sex rooms or whatever, you know? And he's showing you, and you're like, God damn, that's a lot of lube. Where's and the then, yeah, Is that a pallet of lube? Uh, and, then, and, and then you're like, man, the food here is going to be fucking off the chain before this thing gets cracking. You know what I mean? Do we eat after or before? You're all excited on your way to the spread, and you get to the spread, and it's literally it's just like mini corn dogs and like, and like Oreo, Oreida tater tots, uh, like a, a big thing of French's mustard, the pumps with the cups, uh, you know? It's if, just fair food. If, if So those, I would be fine with that because <laughs> I like all those things. Yeah. But Give me some greasy food and fuck me in the ass and give me a million dollars. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give me, oh, well, I guess I'm, not a million, but uh, so yeah. the, what would, the way that would end poorly for me is if I walk into the, and he's showing me the mansion and he's showing off the things and he's showing off the rooms and then we get to the kitchen and it's a big fucking gorgeous kitchen and then there are just like six of those H-E-B veggie trays. <laughs> They're just like crudite. Just like <laughs> yeah. fucking carrots and celery and broccoli and, and cauliflower. those terrible sandwiches and that are dry. There's no ranch. <laughs> just, oh. just dry vegetables just out on trays. <laughs> I would take a knife out of his very nice block, <laughs> probably of Wustoff's. He has good taste, and I'd stab him in the chest with it. You, I could see you walking around with a plate of veggies, and you're kind of like weaving around like Ashton Kutcher and yeah. Mila Kunas and shit, and you're like, is there any ranch? Yeah. Is there any, has, anybody, has anybody anybody see ranch? Has anyone seen any ranch? Yeah, we saw the ranch. Yeah, Danny Masterson was on that. We Yeah, we miss him. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, not the ra ranch. I'm not talking about credits right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm talking, I need fucking ranch. <laughs> These are dry vegetables. <laughs> dry raw vegetables are the craziest Jesus thing. Jesus Christ, if that guy keeps acting up, he's not going to get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be on your best behavior at the Diddy party to get get fucked and blackmailed. Oh man, it's uh... <laughs> the craziest thing that the Diddy party shit showed me. It's like now I just think everything everything around us is built on on sex and blackmail. Like everything, because it's like how many people, so many people went to the Diddy party, so many yeah. people went to the Epstein's. Is the whole fucking country built on sex and blackmail? Are these it's, walls of this studio built on sex and blackmail? I think that that's, that's the thing is that because uh, everyone in all of showbiz and politics and business is all fake nice, mm. uh, that everyone has just been gathering dirt on everyone. And then once exposing people became cool and a way to gain clout or notoriety for yourself that it it, it just it people have always been doing all of this stuff people have always been doing all the the fuckery you know mm -hmm. but it's for the first time there's like uh, an incentive to expose personally like and you can do it anonymously and you can take out your competitors i mean it's you it's right there's so like uh what used to be <clears throat> crazy high scale you know like espionage tactics are now things that just like a scorned ex does on instagram you know? yeah. <laughs> like people are creating whole fake people to fuck someone's life up and luring them into giant crazy traps and it's like that used to be something the cia planned for six months and had code words for and now it's just like Tiffany's pissed because Brian's an asshole. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. what? <laughs> like, that's just like the world we live. So, like, there's like sex and blackmail on every level. Like, the Diddy party right. stuff is concerning. But what's more concerning is that we gave a shit about any of these people to begin with. Yeah. I get like idolizing musicians at some level, and I get idolizing uh, like fighters, and, and I get idolizing athletes. For me personally, I get idolizing comedians because it's my shit. But, like, Television and film people, I have never <clears throat> understood. Like he's such a great actor. When there are great actors, there yeah. are great actors. But the ones that aren't, it's not even for their acting. It's just they're cool to look at. Like Paris Hilton or something. Yeah, Paris yeah. Hilton's a, a, like a great one. Like the like. I don't know. I don't think Ashton Kutcher is a very good actor. Oh, 
and like oh, she made his career off of dude <laughs> it, it, like to have ever given a shit what the fucking dumb hot guy on that 70s show cared about anything yeah. why so crazy too that what? he's like being implicated in things now i haven't really looked into this shit i probably should have none of them are but, themselves on stage that's yeah, the thing is yeah. every notion you have of who ashton kutcher is is the some someone else with talent wrote a thing and created a thing and created someone interesting mm -hmm. And then his gawky ass was gorgeous enough Insert to, to fill it in. Insert hot guy. Yeah, and like I, I don't like I'm sure there's some difficulty to remembering all the lines in a row. Yeah. But man, for twenty million dollars, I sure would. <laughs> yeah. You just got punked, Ashton. We're gonna need that again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fuck. <laughs> Is my hat askew enough? <laughs> <laughs> I need to make my trucker hat more askew. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we just destroyed your car, but it's not actually your car. Your car's now askew. Who taught Ashton that word? Yeah. <laughs> Very good, Ashton. Can we get that again? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude. But then, like, there's, like, the problem, too, of, like, you have, like, that hot guy trope, and then you have Brad Pitt, who's also an unbelievable actor. Mm. But while he's an unbelievable actor, uh, I, I don't know who Brad Pitt is. And I don't think he is anyone. I think Brad Pitt was awesome in seven but i don't like, think <laughs> yeah. i don't think that that should have anything to do with anything else in my life yeah <laughs> like like uh, man. i've never been a, a obsessed with celebrity i always remember my mom would be reading people magazine and shit and i'd look in it sometimes and be like what is this shit? where's the video games you know like what's a, this is not interesting to me at all yeah like i just and, and i guess like I, I don't understand taking advice from any of those other categories like for me i take advice from comedians because mm -hmm. i want to do comedians yeah I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do comedians. I will. We want to do comedians. I want to do comedians. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's bad. But uh, like, I take uh, financial advice from people with more money than me, and I yeah. take health advice from people in better shape than me, uh, and I take food advice from people that have eaten more places than me. <laughs> you know, but like. That like I think that should be how you get your opinions from people. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand like why you would be like. Brad Pitt said, "Get the vaccine." So I don't know if he said that, but my, you know what I mean. Like <laughs> my favorite band is Third Eye Blind. Mm -hmm. Stephen Jenkins, the lead singer, is the most annoying whiny twat to listen to talk. <laughs> I love the band more than anything. I fist fought people for shit talking them for before. What, Third Eye Blind. Third Eye Blind. Okay. Jumper. Yeah. Yeah. Semi Charm Life. All I that. want something else. That's him. It's good, even with you mocking it. I still like it. Get me through this. Yeah. Semi Charm a, kind of life. It's a song about meth they got played on the baby, radio. That's sick baby. as fuck. That is cool. Um, I'm not mocking it. I fuck but, with 90s music. But so I, like, I, I love them, but like, even him, like, it, it's so easy to divorce the artist from the artist. And like, just, I really love them, but I don't mm. give a shit about. In those people, I, I think, yeah, yeah, the, it made me wonder, uh, like, if do you think that they're gonna have like a stamp, like, you know, like, organic food? It's like this music was made, this album was made with no sex and blackmail. Like, at some point, you know, like everyone's album's gonna come out that there was some kind of tie to the oh. Diddy party or something like that. So, you got like a like, like a USDA cruelty choice, free. cruelty free, <laughs> like sex and blackmail free music. <laughs> I think that the, the internet has already tried to claim no diddy yeah. as, a, as a thing. Yeah, so. yeah no, the no diddy seal of approval. You have to have people come out and inspect and like dig deep in the timeline you know of how this album gonna was be, made. It, it's not going to be a stamp that goes on anything. It's going to be a SAG after a line item fee. <laughs> it's going to be part of actors and union dues <laughs> yeah. and, and musicians dues as well. And they're just going to have to pay like a $20 a month diddy fee. That's like just to certify that they were not around any people of that stature. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're going to have some Somebody look into it. To the next time that some fucking TikTok star gets signed to like Interscope, they're gonna have to send like a Diddy clause. Yeah. It's like, were you ever at these parties? And can we say that you weren't? Yeah, exactly. I was so much free. shit. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if like us, I wonder how much of our favorite music is gonna be because there's so many hits. So many hits. He's a great motivator. You know, like, you want me to release this Every... video of you getting fucked in the ass? Okay, you better fucking release a number one hit single. He did that so many times. The reason that your band is not internationally famous and well-known <laughs> and multiple times over platinum is because you have not done enough fucked up shit. <laughs> I haven't done It's it. on your shoulders. You're right. If you were out there... Oh, you don't think Anthony Kiedis cares about his band? He fucked a child. Oh. <laughs> He fucked a 14-year-old and bragged about it in a book. That's how much he loves his music. That's the That's why I know I'm not going to make comedies. I'm not willing to do that for my comedy. Yeah. 
I'm never going to make it because I won't rape what someone to get What do you think Under the Bridge was really about? Yeah. <laughs> it was where he was finding Take those 14-year-olds. Take me to the place I love. Yeah. <laughs> With 14-year-olds? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I never liked that band, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> they did I, not get the Diddy seal of approval, dude. Dude, I really like the their no music. The no Diddy. But they suck as people. But yeah. I don't give a shit. I don't, I'm not listening to music because I care about anything other than the music part. And maybe I'm a bad person for that. I get that that probably in the eyes of many people, I'm supporting the bad guys. But also, the quality of stuff keeps getting worse, and you keep supporting all the good people. Yeah. <laughs> Music's not as good as it used to be. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm with you there. D dude, fucking just like the average number one hit from 50 years ago versus now, mm -hmm. it just it hits so much harder. It hits across every generation. If you take the music that's coming out now and you play it to past people, it fucking sucks. I've been listening to so much old shit. It's so good. Yeah. It's and the you best. hear stuff back then that sounds like it was made recently. I mean, there's fucking yeah. music that was coming out in the early 2000s that sounds like really modern, current, alternative rock stuff. And now, you're like, yeah. what the fuck? Now people are doing the opposite where there's like Leon Bridges and shit like that sounds like it's playing through an old radio. Yeah. You know, but you're like, oh, this came out. Today? Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, I thought fuck? Orville Peck was from 1963. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw his stupid fucking face, and I was like, cool. Yeah. Cool, good. <laughs> like, good. And, that, and that's the thing is, like, they're building on, like, they're standing on the shoulders of giants, and I get all that stuff. But, like, man, it, it just, rock stars used to be bad people. Yeah. And rock used to I think to about rule. this all the time, dude. What happened to us? What happened to it metalheads? Sucks it feels like metalheads just, got so soft. Ryan Long has a joke in his new special about the fucking... Excuse me, the action stars being shitty now because they're all supposed to be good people. But mm -hmm. it's just like, man, that's a perfect bit because that's exactly what's fucking going on. Yeah. Everything across the board is that way. Yeah. Like, dude, we used to be so metal and now we just smoke pot and play with Legos. You know what I mean? There's nothing metal about metalheads anymore. Like, you used to, you used to be, be able to see like a fully tattooed person, you know, like wearing all black and you're like, dude, that guy's dangerous. He's, he's, dude, he's, uh, he's edgy and dangerous. Tattoos were for criminals and veterans. Yeah. And now I have smiley faces on my thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 it, like, it's, it's so insane that, like, I, I used to try and do a joke about it, but it just upset people. But, like, it used to be, like, it uh, people would get tattoos because they wanted to remember their time in the Navy with Jim. And when they went home to their dumb whore wife, Margaret, they were just like, Jim. And looked at an anchor and were like, I miss you. And she goes, what? And he goes, nothing. You know? Like, you wouldn't understand. Yeah, like, they used to mean something. You know? <laughs> Like tattoos used to like you used to get a swallow because you crossed a meridian and you blew a kernel, you know, like it, it meant so. And now it's like a tattoo meant that I found a Xanax dealer in that city and had two hundred dollars in my pocket. Or you like lobster. Dude, th this was I was drunk in New Orleans on Magazine Street and was like, I want a crawfish tattoo. <laughs> and there was a tattoo shop and I was like, hey, man, can I get a crawfish? And he went, fuck, yeah. yeah. And that was the my whole thing. Get a crawfish. Dude, the, the the way that I got this butterfly tattoo, which is a stick of butter with wings. <laughs> Can you try to hold it up? I don't know if you can get it. It's, I don't know. They can't see it. it it's on my Instagram. But the yeah. way that that happened is uh, Chris Ramsey, who's a unbelievably talented mm -hmm. magician, comedian. We just had his friend Wes on the podcast. Yeah. So when yeah. I met Chris and Wes, uh, we hit it off. And then a few times in, I was like, hey, guys, come do my podcast. And I mm -hmm. was in the studio. And Jerm was there and was also blown away by their magic. Uh, and so we all went to go do my pod, and then uh, Jerm was like, I'll give you guys matching pods on the tattoo. And me and Chris didn't want to pick anything, and so we were like, just surprise us, make it not you know, too dumb. And then we got matching butterfly tattoos that's an amazing live tattoo. on a podcast. It's a great tattoo. And it, and it's like, that's a cool story, but as you, <laughs> it's like, come on, it's not tough. Yeah. This doesn't, no one should be have fear struck into them by a butterfly. <laughs> you know, like... It, all of my tattoos, when you look at me visually, you're like, oh, he's retarded. <laughs> you know, like, I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm, a, well, I'm a walking joke. I'm a big, dumb boy. I don't think, I actually don't think that when I see your tattoos. What I, when, I, when I think that is when I see tattoos that when you're not trying to, like, get, fill your arm up with, like, individual things that are, like, cool looking. Mm -hmm. Like, you know those guys go and they get the old style, like, pinup tattoo and it's like the panther mm -hmm. and then they get like the flag the pirate flag with mm -hmm. the skull on it and then they get like the girl on from the front of the ship a dagger through a yeah, heart and a yeah. dagger through a heart yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. like those what are those called like those corny tattoos it's just traditional. there's like a type yeah yeah huh 
Yeah. yeah. But like guys just get like their sleeve filled up with that and they think it's dope. And they're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. you mean like roses that say mom? <laughs> <laughs> Make you feel better, yeah. or perhaps a family crest. <laughs> Yo, chill with the family crest. I know that at, at first glance, it, it's got very, it's got some some big regrets. vibes, dude. Big regrets. That looks We're like a Nazi prison tattoo. Full blown Irish, <laughs> Irish surname from fucking a, a king of Ireland. And man, did I almost get the fucking Nazi cross. Dude, you, you. And it is red and black and pretty faded, and it looks like something I'd be ashamed of. Dude. <laughs> you you almost tripped and fell into a Nazi cross. Yep. And here's that's the best wild. part is that is a matching tattoo with my father. So, <laughs> so that's a mistake made it's, twice. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. That has mine comp written all over it, dude. Yeah. That's oh. my struggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where are we at, Mark? <laughs> One ten. We can keep going for a minute. Uh, you got to get out of here or anything? No. Yeah. Um, okay. I did want to say this I could, while we were talking. I wrote this down. Um, what would uh, what would your last meal be if you were like a serial killer and you got put away and you got put on death row? What would your What would your last meal be? Two hundred yeah. uncrustables. <laughs> no. No, no. no. I also wrote a, a question. We can do that one in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Penis? Yeah, I just wrote We penis. already talked about that. <laughs> I just wrote the word penis. <laughs> That's great. It Good just, notes. I also did that like 45 minutes ago. <laughs> Good notes. It, it was so funny when you did it too, because you went, oh. <laughs> you, you, you did that. Oh, actually, I've got something for you later, because I grabbed my pen and I was like, I got something. And you were like, oh, mm, I've got an idea too. This would be great. <laughs> I just saved it for when you did yours. Uh. <laughs> I really felt like Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> You've activated my trap card, Kaiba. Penis. Penis. <laughs> Blue eyes, white cock. Um, last meal. So I think I have a tough time with this because um, I'd like to stick thematically to one genre of food. Um, a bang bang is good, but it always leaves me feeling icky afterwards. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very important to choose what you're banging with what. Like you can't mix like ethnicities. The, you can't go too far across from each other or you have to go like completely polar opposites. And you got to stick with like appetizers at one and main courses at the other. Like there's got to be strategy involved. <laughs> <laughs> I bring a real Formula One energy to meals <laughs> that people do. don't appreciate. I appreciate it. I do. I just, it's, I just think it's hilarious. It's it's one of those things like when you see somebody that's so good at something that it's funny, yeah. and it's like you're like so good at like a funny like something that you shouldn't be this good at. Like most people just eat, put stuff in their mouth and they go, "Fuck, I'm hungry. What's near? What's cheap?" And you're like, "Well, let's talk about that. <laughs> let's wait. Hold on, your horses here. There's yeah. things going on. We need to, brother. The decision tree in my head about how to choose food." Can you draw it? No. It's dynamic <laughs> is it more and of a, evolving. Is, is it more of a web? <laughs> yeah. It, it looks like a, a schizophrenic person's Idea bubbles. yarn drawing. Yeah. Uh, so last meal, I think, like, my gut instinct is just to go Southern Comfort because it's such a great genre of food. Yeah. Um, a chicken fried steak done perfectly with gravy. Mm. So I just went to Babe's on uh, mm, Sunday. You gotta go. We gotta go eat more. It's the best thing in DFW. It's the it's the only reason to be up there. It's a it's so fucking good. But uh, chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes, cream corn, green beans, uh, the gravy, the biscuits. Uh, they serve sorghum there, which is like a molasses type syrup mm -hmm. thing with some butter and sorghum on the biscuits. Um, like I I don't have it at Babe's, but I would add it to the meals. Mac and cheese. I would do mac and cheese from a place called Eatsies, mm -hmm. also based out of Dallas. Um, I don't know. If, actually, they're not based out of Dallas. That's where I found them. But uh, your last meal would be like that Chappelle skit where he's like, he's like, I need you to go to Queens and give me a sugar cookie. <laughs> like, I need you to go to Bay. I want a chicken fried steak, but not just any chicken fried steak. Yeah, well, <laughs> you'd be having people like door dashing on planes to try to get this guy his last meal. I so like, there's that side of it where I want to do the comfort style cooking, but then I also really like like elevated seafood stuff is mm -hmm. is probably my favorite thing like um lobster rolls and shit lobster rolls are great uh my favorite dish at opals was these sea cakes that they made so it was a japanese style fluffy pancake served with a cultured honey butter with salmon roe and honeycomb that would be nice at the diddy party for sure 
fucking incredible, right? It, it's a <laughs> Don't big, take it the wrong way, guys. It's a big fluffy pancake, and then you smear a bunch of honey butter that's got like a real rich, it's it's from a dairy. So it's like, like a seafood pancake? You know how when you drink skim milk versus whole milk, you can taste like the milk is milkier? Mm -hmm. like that's, <laughs> like, that's, that's, I don't know how to, to put it in less. Like, I'm trying to make it as layman's as possible, yeah. just like it, like the the heart of the matter is like, <laughs> The more fat in the milk, the milkier it tastes. Mm -hmm. that, that essence of the milk. The difference between a whole milk from Borden and a whole milk from a place like Volman's is as stark of a difference between skim milk and whole milk from Borden. So it, it's the- What's Borden? Just the, the one with the cow in the, oh, okay. the flour. So it's just a companies. very yeah. common, popular mainstream dairy. So- mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That sucked to say out loud. <laughs> Fuck! I felt You're, it. You are as you are as deep into food as you are. As this is not an intervention, dude. This is great. You're as deep into food as like those those <laughs> dorky weed guys are. Like into weed. Like no, dude, it's the terpenes. Well, there's this there's this stuff called myrcene, and we really it's, that's what hits you kind of in the back of your eyes. Yeah, it's also found in like pine and and it's, you're it's, like that's a, that's, that's a really all true. That's a common dairy. Talk about limonene now. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Well, limonene is more relaxing and productive, um, often found in different citrus rind. And um, I worked in dispensaries for you. Oh, all right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about lenolol. No, dude, I'm just kidding. I but you, love weed. You know, yeah, yeah, I know you do. You, um, I'll load another bowl. But you, you, uh, you keep going though. I'm but, sorry. So, but so like Borden's, um, the, the dairy, the milk is milkier. The milk is milkier. So when you get into anything in the dairy world, like um, it's it's if you've ever had eggs from a farmer's market or had raw milk, like any of those, you know, small, like batch, assist, assist, essentially, like anything that's produced in small scale that's made for quality rather than making money, mm -hmm. like the, the quality difference is just fucking huge. And, and so with a really good butter, like butter isn't, it, it, when you put butter on bread, that should be sufficient. Like that should be enough flavor. Everything else should just be bonus on top of that. But butter and bread, like it, it's become a very boring entry to dinner way to fill you up the with something sucks. cheap. But like, you know, even places like uh, Texas Roadhouse and um, Saltgrass and, and some of the other like, you know, low tier chains of steakhouses, they've, they've put honey in their butter to at least just add a complexity to that because they realize that people appreciate that flavor. But so when you have like a really good cultured butter like that, when you add honey to it and then you, you have the sweetness and the nuttiness and the creaminess of the butter with the salty briny salmon roe with the texture differential of you get a pop like boba with the salmon roe because they're the eggs so those are popping and then releasing the salty you get the creamy <laughs> at feeling of the butter and then you have the texture of this fluffy pancake where it's hard to tell you can tell based on the density that you are chewing through something, but you can't tell based on the texture that there's anything there. There's like a fluffiness around your teeth, but not really any resistance to it. So you have that going, and then you have, just as the, the perfect cherry on top, is the honeycomb. And the honeycomb brings a, a huge burst of sweetness that cuts through the salty of the, the salmon row, and then adds a crunch that's very, it's a, it's a crystal feeling. Mm -hmm. It's the combs of the honey, so it's, very, very small textures breaking thousands of times in a very small area. So it's it's crystalline. It's a very unique texture feel to get with all of these other textures at once and all of those flavors, and they all do something to add to the other. <laughs> I, I, pi I picture that's amazing. That is amazing. I, I picture you t telling that to the prison guard. Like, he's like, what do you want? So there's these there's these cakes. You know what I mean? And he's just like, oh, my God. You know, you're like, no, no, no. You have to understand it's the butter's important. It's it's boudins or whatever. It's, Brother, it's imagine, bones. Imagine me giving that order, that description to a prison guard, and then he brings out pancakes from IHOP with butter and then some uncracked eggs and salmon on top. And then a bunch of honeycomb cereal. I was like, I think this is what you asked for. Salmon eggs and honeycomb with pancakes. And you give it a hard look and you go, it'll do. <laughs> you give it a hard look and you go, you have any syrup in there? I shouldn't have fucking killed those people. <laughs> 
fucked your last meal up? I see you too. Like you're milking, you're you're milking the last meal because they're like bringing you stuff, and you're like eating the chicken fried steak because that was pretty good. But they bring you like the seafood cakes, mm -hmm. and you're like, no, 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 that's actually not right. You know, it's my last meal here, guys. It's my last meal here. You could at least, you know, you've, Don't been, fuck this up. you've been in there for like 14 hours and they're yeah. trying to fucking get it right. And you're just like, and then it becomes like a chef thing where they're like it's coming me up. as Gordon Ramsay yeah, in the kitchen. Yeah, just, comes, comes, <laughs> just screaming, you fucking donkey, salmon row. It's my last day alive, you piece of shit. I've killed 13 people. I'm about to make it 14. If you don't fucking fluff up your pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> whisk, whisk, remove from heat. Yeah, but it is important. But it's, it's, um, no, I the, like I. So I like that kind of stuff. Like that food. That mm -hmm. that whole the amount of thought and expertise from a chef to put that together and make that all happen and know enough to source all of those things and then cook them to the level that they're supposed to be. Like that shit. That gets me as hard as perfect chicken fried steak. Because it's like perfect chicken fried steak and gravy is it's my favorite flavor thing. It, it feels it brings me like nostalgic memories mm -hmm. and it's so nice from childhood and all the flavors and blah 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 the South Hooray. But uh the that's playing on my nostalgia and emotions that affect the way that my flavor is experienced for that thing, but there's not much complexity to the flavor. It's 15 spices and breading on yeah. beef with meat grease mixed with flour you should be a food writer and make it kind of funny you could be like an anthony bourdain kind of character but more of a comedian as long as i get to kill myself <laughs> <laughs> i'm in <laughs> if you could guarantee the same ending brother sign me up <laughs> have i got a blog for you yeah. <laughs> Did you know I actually like to choke myself while I masturbate as well? <laughs> yeah, but I just do it by going like this. Because I, I'm fat enough that I can hold off my breathing with my own chins. <clears throat> Dude, I think we need to get out of here and go eat some food. Fuck yeah, let's I'm do fucking it. hungry. I love you, Mike Eaton. You're Thank one you of the too. hardest working, one of the funniest guys in town. Thank you. And you deserve the entire world. And I'm going to do whatever I can to give it to you, buddy. I love so, you. So uh, I love you too. I'm so glad we became friends. Guys, follow Mike Eaton on Instagram, on YouTube. Check out his roast battle with our buddy Michael Ridley. Um, you can also uh, check out his podcasts. Uh, what are those again? Go I, ahead and plug your stuff too, yeah. but I wanted to give you a. Think, well, thank you. Thank I wanted you to pre plug. Me on the I, wanted to pre I wanted to pre plug. I'm sorry. I'm just excited. I love you. I love you too, man. I, this I was love very talking fun. to you. Yeah, we got to do it again. Yeah, I'm so before like a year though. <laughs> yeah. Because we'll let's plan it now and then it'll happen. Yes, yeah. yeah. Let's start talking about it again right yes. after, dude. You got to do the pod. I come tomorrow. Fucking I'm like, dude, you got to do the pod. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We just start the cycle over again. Uh, if uh, Mike is eating on Instagram and I got all the pods on there, so come check it out. Sweet. All right. Thanks, guys. You are listening to Gorgas. You idiot.